Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at how exponential graphs can be used to model different things. We had a um, money in the bank that was increasing. We had the cases of COVID that was increasing. We said the population of an animal species that was decreasing. So I'm going to come back to all of this in just a second, but I'm going to go to this link down here on Desmos, and I'm going to show you some things about these graphs. So what I've plotted here is I have plotted the graph y equals a to the power of x. And I've got this slider at the bottom here that will allow me to change the base. So for example, the graph we did originally was 2 to the power of x. So if I make that just a 2, this is the original graph that I looked at in the last video. You can see the different points that it's passing through. It's going through 1, 2, 3, 8, etc, etc. Now let's look what happens if we increase a. So at the moment, it's 2 to the power of x. If I make a become bigger, you can see that the graph is increasing much more steeply. It's on the right hand side. That branch is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. OK, if I decrease a so that it goes down towards less than 2, you can see that it's much more shallow. The rate of growth looks much more, uh, much slower. OK, so here's a nice shallow one where it's 1.1. Doesn't really look like the same kind of exponential curve that we had over here, but it is the same type. Now, when I get one, I get a completely flat line. Think to yourself, why am I getting a flat line? Well, one to the power of anything is always going to be one. Here's the important bit. When I go to a number that's less than one, you can see that the graph has kind of flipped over. So instead of it being an exponential growth, it is becoming exponential decay. Let's have a think about why that happens. If you have, let's leave it on 0 0.3, for example. If you have 0 0.3 and you are doing that to the power of a positive number, you are multiplying 0 0.3 by itself several times. So you might have something like 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. And each time you multiply by 0 0.3, the number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Also, if you're doing 0 0.3 to a negative number, it's actually going to become quite a big number. We'll have a think about why that is. 0 0.3 um, is 3 tenths. And we know when we do something to a negative power, we take the reciprocal of that. So we would have 10 thirds. And 10 thirds is a number that is bigger than one. So when you raise it to a higher power, it's going to get pretty big pretty quickly. So let's go back to the graph again. You'll notice that I can't actually go to below zero here. When I have zero to the power of x, I just have everything on the right hand side is zero. We can't actually input here negative numbers in the base. And I'll show you why. If I was going to put a negative number in here, let's say we're going to do negative three to the power of two. OK, well, I can get an output there and negative three to the power of three. OK, well, I can get an output there. But if I put in a decimal number, you get something like this, which has got a complex number. It's got an imaginary number in there. The reason that's happening is because doing something to a 1.5, or perhaps a little bit easier, to a 0 0.5, includes taking the square root. And if you're taking a square root of a negative number, we have to go into imaginary numbers. So these exponential graphs are only defined for positive base numbers. OK. Before we move on from this, I want to have a look and see if there's any other properties that you can spot as I vary the value of A. So we've spotted one of the things that when a is less than one, it is a, a decaying graph. It is going um, sloping downwards. And when it's bigger than one, it is sloping upwards. This whole time, I've hoped that you've noticed at the y axis, it is always crossing one. It's always crossing at one on the y axis. And that is because anything to the power of zero is going to be one. So let's go back to the slides that we've got here. What I've got is kind of like a still version of what we've just been looking at. I've said here are sketches of y equals 3 to the power of x, 2 to the power of x, and 1.5 to the power of x. Well, clearly 3 to the x is the steepest one, and it's also the, the kind of goes, as, uh, goes close to the x-axis really quickly. 2 to the power of x is in between, and 1.5x is at the bottom. Let's read through, through some of these things. I've said if x is less than 0, so if the power is less than 0, the larger the base, the smaller the y value. So you can see that, that the green one is below the blue one, which is below the orange one. The y-intercept is always 1, because all of these things to the power of 0 is 1. 
And if x is greater than zero, the larger the base, the larger the y value. So 1.5x is below the 2x, which is below the 3x. And then I've done a demonstration of what happens when you have something that is less than one and something that is greater than one on the same axes. So on the same axis sketch, y equals two to the power of x and y equals a half x. Well, of course, they're both going to be crossing at one. This one is going to have the downwards, the decaying kind of growth, um, de sorry, decaying kind of pattern because it is less than one. And this one has got the growth. So some important notes inside this red box. Y equals two to the power of X is said to be exponentially growing, whereas a half to the power of X is said to be exponentially decaying because it's getting smaller, halving each time that X increases by one. There's some other interesting things here that a half to the power of X is a reflection of Y equals two to the power of X in the line X equals zero down this Y axis here. They are reflections of each other. And here's a short proof. If f of x is equal to the power of x, f of minus x is 2 to the power of minus x, which is 1 over 2 to the power of x because of the negative power, which is the same as a half x. So we're saying here that f of x, um, if you rewrite it as f of minus x, you get this one, which we know that f of minus x is a reflection in the y-axis. Last thing here is that a half x would usually, sorry, a half to the power of x would usually be written as two to the power of minus x, but it doesn't matter. You just need to be familiar with these kinds of things. So at the bottom, I've said you should therefore in general be able to recognize and sketch the graph of y equals a to the power of minus x. And we're going to explore some of that in just a second. So I've got four graphs here and we need to try and decide which one matches which function. I'm going to ask you to pause the video, have a li little think and see if you can tell which graph goes with which. OK, so pretty easy to see. This is 0 0.5 to the power of X. This one is going to be exponential decay. So it's going to be this red one that we've got here. It's going to be 0 0.5 to the power of X, which we said on the same page um, before is the same as two to the power of minus x. Now we need to decide which one do we think is one to the power of x? Well, I think one to the power of x is actually a pretty boring graph. It's just always gonna be one. So this one here is y equals one to the power of x. Then we've got two to the power of x and three to the power of x. Well, three to the power of x is going to be steeper than two to the power of x. And it's worth noticing here that the three to the power of x is below the two to the power of x that is on this side. So let's go ahead now and do some transformations of these graphs. So I want to sketch y equals two to the power of x plus three. And remember we can use all of our transformations knowledge that we've got from earlier on. So I'm gonna start off by saying, let f of x equal the graph we know how to draw, which is two to the power of x. Then, we can see that two to the power of x plus three is just f of x plus three. And we know that this rep represents a translation of minus three, zero. So it's gone three spaces to the left. So let's think about what this would look like as a graph. Two to the power of x, it is going to be a graph that looks like this, passing through one. Now, when it moves three spaces to the left, it's just going to be the same graph that's just kind of going like this. And we just need to figure out about where it's crossing the axis. So if this is y equals two to the power of x plus three. Think to yourself, how could we find this y coordinate here? How could we find this y coordinate here? Well, it is when x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to 0, y would be equal to 2 to the power of 0 plus 3, which is just 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. So I perhaps haven't drawn this very much, very well to scale, but I've got that it's going through 8 here. Now, you could think about it as this um, translation, but I'm going to suggest a better way to sketch these graphs. So this is my preferred method. One is to think about the shape of the exponential graph. Is it going to be like this? Is it going to be like this? The next thing is to think about the y-intercept. And to find the y-intercept, we just make x equals zero. And for the last part, we're gonna be thinking about any asymptotes that we might have. Um, we kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier on, but this line that we've got here, 
the x-axis is an asymptote, and we know that the x-axis is y equals zero. So you just need to think about these three things. So what I would have probably done for this first graph is I would have just said, OK, well, I know that the shape of the graph is the same kind of exponential graph. The y-intercept I'll work out is going to be 8. And the asymptote is kind of clear that it's just going to be this one that we've got. That's probably my favourite way of doing these. So I'm just going to highlight this as my favourite method of sketching these graphs, even though you can do them using transformations. Let's have a look at this one. It says the population of squirrels in a forest is modelled by the equation p equals 300, 1.05 to the power of t, where t is in years. Sketch a graph of the population over time. OK, so if we wanted to interpret what was actually happening here, this means that the population is increasing by 5% per year. So we're going to try and think about what this sketch would look like. Now, if it's increasing by 5% each year, we know out of the three things, for, sorry, out of the, the three things we're going to look at, the shape, the y-intercept, and the asymptote, we've got a choice of the shape being like this or like this. Well, it's going to be this one because the population is increasing. So let's get our axes here. And I'm going to draw what the graph looks like because it's a sketch, doesn't matter too much. Just need to show that it's going exponentially upwards like this. Now we're going to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals zero. So if x is equal to zero, um, the population is really when t is equal to zero. So the population would be 300 multiplied by 1.05 to the zero. 1.05 to the zero is just one. So it's 300. So this graph here is crossing at 300. And the asymptote, this graph is going to go all the way down to zero. So the asymptote is just going to stay in the same place. We haven't really done one where the asymptote is very interesting. So this is t and this is p over here. Now, if you wanted to, you could think about this as other transformations. You could think about this as a transformation of the graph p equals 1.05 t. So if we let f of t equal 1.05 t to the power of t, this would be 300 f of t. In other words, it is a stretch in the vertical direction of 300. But to be honest with you, I don't think it's much easier. I think this is a much easier way of thinking about this rather than transformations. Just think about those three things, the shape, the y-intercept, and the asymptotes. We haven't really had to do anything with asymptotes just yet, but we will do in just a second. So here I have got three graphs I want to think about. In the textbook, they've asked you to draw it on the same diagram, but I actually think it gets really, really confusing. So we're going to go through those three options each time. We're going to do shape, we're going to do y-intercept, and we're going to think about the asymptote. So for the first one, we've got that f of x is 2 to the power of x, and we're going to do 4 f of x. So let's draw the graph here. Well, we know that 4f of x is just a vertical stretch. So if you did have 2 to the power of x, we would be able to draw on top of it like a vertical stretch like this. But it's kind of confusing. I think it's easier just to draw the general shape of the exponential graph. So we've done that first bit. Now, the y-intercept is just going to be thinking about what happens when x is equal to 0. So y would be equal to 4 times 2 to the power of x which is just going to be 4 times 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, so it's crossing here at 4. And the asymptote is just going to be the same bit. The asymptote here is just going to be the x-axis. So this is y equals 4 to the power of x. If you want to, you could see that underneath it would be the normal graph like this. This is your y equals f of x. Let's try the next one. So the next one is y equals f of x plus 2. So let's draw the axes that we've got here. You might like to think about what the original graph looks like. So this is what the original graph looks like, y equals f of x. And if it's a plus 2, then I'm hoping you're going to realise that y equals f of x plus 2 just means a translation upwards. It's going to be a translation of 0, 2. So... It normally crosses at 1, 
this time it's going to be crossing at three and it's going to be going like this kind of shape. So we've got the right shape, we've got the right y-intercept, now I want to think really carefully about the asymptote. So the asymptote for the original graph is this line which is y equals zero. So that asymptote is still going to be there but it's moved two places up. So the asymptote is just going to be y equals two. And then we've done those three things there. And then for this last one that we've got, we want to sketch y equals a, um, f of a quarter x. So really what it's asking for us to sketch here is y equals two to the power of a quarter x. Now we know what this means. This is gonna be a stretch in the x direction and because it's a quarter, what should the scale factor be? One over a quarter, which is four. So it's going to be kind of stretched four out in this direction. That's not going to be very easy to sketch. It's just going to look pretty, pretty much the same, but, well, just more stretched outwards. So we'll, we'll see if we can sketch it from the original one. But I prefer my method of just doing shape, y-intercept, and asymptote. So if the original one looks like this, crossing at one, if we're stretching it four, well, then it's going to be like a kind of stretched out shape like this, but it's still going to be crossing at one. Now, they very rarely ask you to draw both of them at the same time. So if they don't ask you to draw them both at the same time, we're going to do my preferred method. Well, this has clearly got a base that is bigger than one. So the shape of the graph is still going to be like this. And we know the asymptote is still in the correct place. If I make x equal to zero here to find the y-intercept, I will just get that the y-intercept is one. So it basically looks like the same exponential graph. If you have both of them on the axes at the same time, yes, you can tell a difference between them. It's been stretched, but without it, they're always gonna have that same kind of pattern. So this is y equals f of a quarter x. I didn't label this one. This is y equals f of x plus two, f of x plus two like this. Just one more thing to be careful of before you try this exercise. If they ask you to sketch something like, I don't know, let's say sketch y equals 0.3 to the power of uh, minus x, we can think really carefully about what this would be. So I'm gonna draw the axes here. Now, first of all, you would say, 0.3 to the power of x, that one is going to be a decaying kind of graph. Now, because we've got the minus x that's in here, think about what that is going to do, what kind of reflection that might take. Well, it's then going to make it reflect so that you reflect it in the y-axis, so you actually get this kind of shape. So y equals 0.3 to the minus x is gonna just be like a standard kind of exponential graph. And just before we move you on to the exercise, I might see if I can fit in one more question here. I'm going to erase this so that you've got some space. I'm going to try and this time plot y equals, let's try, minus 2 to the power of x. So I earlier on said you can't put negative numbers in here, but I'm not putting negative numbers on here. If I put a negative number in, I would have been meaning like this, but the negative is outside. So it's meaning do two to the power of X and then make it become negative. Well, we know that if you have minus F of X, that is a reflection in the X axis. So Y equals two to the power of X normally looks like this. And so if it's the minus version, it's going to be the same thing, but just coming downwards. So it would be crossing at minus one. This is y equals minus two to the power of x. Um, you'll see I used the Desmos app earlier. So you can download this app. It's completely free. You can have it on phones, iPads. You can just go on the web browser. It is so useful for you to just test some of these things out and see if you get the right answers. OK, so that's enough for you to have a go at exercise 14a here.